Welcome to graduation. We are so happy that you're here. As a matter of fact, we're so happy that we're able to be here. Last year, you'll remember, we were struggling with COVID and things of that nature. And I think the absence of some of the things we cherish has made us appreciate them more. I don't know about you, but I'm really happy to be at graduation tonight. We are going to have the invocation by Mr. Dave Gumbiner. He is the father of one of our Master of Education graduates. Mr. Gumbiner, if you'll come to the platform, please. It is so happy to have them here from the great city of Chicago. And he's going to pray the invocation tonight. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come before thee tonight. Lord, we pray that your presence would be here. We pray, Father, that your presence would be upon these graduates, Father, and that you'd anoint them and help them and encourage them, Father. Lord, we think about the fact that there's thousands of people graduating this year, but God, here in Hope Sound, at this college, at this academy, you called these people. And Father, you had a purpose for it, and we're trusting in you, Father, to use it for thy glory and for thy purpose. Have your way in their lives and their hearts. Father, I'm reminded of the first president of Hope Sound, Brother Stephen Heron. He said to a bunch of ministerial students one time, gentlemen, it's going to be more than this piece of paper that's going to keep you by the stuff. Whether they're called to be ministers or missionaries or song evangelists or good lay people, whatever their calling is, Father, we pray that you'd help them to stay by the stuff, to be encouraged in the things of the Lord, to be on fire for thee, Father, for that's what we need in this hour and day. May you bless these service and guide and direct each one of these graduates. We'll praise you for what you accomplish in Jesus' precious name. President Steller, Principal Booth, faculty, staff, family, and friends. Thank you for being here on this momentous occasion. Hey, senior class, we made it, barely. We spent the last 13 years of our lives preparing for this moment and has finally arrived. In the last four years, we have stayed up many nights working on school assignments, AKA something for Mrs. Wright, and it was absolutely not because we procrastinated until the night before. We appreciate Mrs. Wright for all the hard work she does we can probably all agree that we are glad it is over. I want to start off by giving gratitude to where it is due. Firstly, to God. Without him, none of us would be in the position we are today. He has definitely helped and blessed me in many ways. Secondly, to my family. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for always being there for me and assisting me in the ways of life. To my older brothers, thank you for always helping me with any assignments and being the best older brothers any little sister could ever want. Thirdly, to my teachers. Thank you for having the patience to teach my class. I'm surprised you're still willing to teach after encountering us. I think my class broke the record for making the most amount of teachers cry. If I remember correctly, it was at least three. But you made it by the mercy of God and lots of coffee. Nevertheless, thanks for showing us how it is to live a Christ-filled life and giving us the tools we will utilize in the next chapter of our lives. Whenever I needed help with an assignment or need advice, you always took the time out of your busy schedule to assist me, and I'm truly grateful. And lastly, to my classmates, thanks for all the memories we created, from the pranks we used to do on each other, remember when Justin almost got poisoned at lunch, shooting each other in the back corner of the ninth grade classroom with big rubber bands, causing our legs to become severely blistered while Mr. Bledo was teaching, roasting each other to the point the school made us write nice notes to each other, which usually said, you're cool, I guess, or in my case, nerd. Tennessee trip where Jacob tried to lift his leg over his head in the van and instead fell over like Humpty Dumpty and on senior trip where Jean almost passed out on an adolescent roller coaster at Dollywood, and many more. You, definitely, you guys definitely knew how to keep school interesting and are seriously the best. I am grateful that God gave me you guys as classmates. I cannot wait to see how God will use you in the future. I would like to leave you with this. As you start this new chapter in our lives, remember to always keep God first. We will all face obstacles in our lives that will lead us to believe we cannot make it, but we have a big God above who will always help us through anything we may encounter. 
I would like to tell you a story about a man who faced many obstacles in his life. This man was born to what most would say a normal family. His mother was a Christian and his father was a hardworking man. As a young boy, he went to church with his mother. He sang in the little kids' choir, learned how to play the handbells, and was even part of a church bus ministry. But once this little boy grew older, that would all change. He dropped out of school in the eighth grade and turned to the streets. He started drinking and experimenting with drugs. His life was a mess. In fact, he was incarcerated on multiple occasions. He tried to fix his life on his own terms, but failed. But God had mercy on this young man. He eventually enrolled in a rehab center, and on a Friday night, God convicted his soul, and he gave his life to the Lord. From then, he's moved on to get his GED, earned five degrees, and is currently work working on his sixth. He's even started multiple churches. God has definitely blessed this man in a mighty way. In fact, it was for not God intervening in his life, I would not be up here giving the speech I was forced to do. If you guys have not realized, that man is my father. Just like God helped my father overcome those big obstacles in his life, he will help every single one of us. One verse that has been very dear to my heart is Hebrews 4.16, which says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Overcoming obstacles is not easy and does not happen overnight. It takes time and happens little by little. Martin Luther once said, you don't have to see all the steps of a big staircase. You just have to take the first step to start climbing them. Taking little steps eventually lead to a bigger success, especially if the Lord leads the way. Isaiah 41, 13 says, After all, it is I, the eternal one, your God, who has hold of your right hand, who whispers in your ear, don't be afraid, I will help you. God will help us overcome any obstacle we may face if we ask him to do so. Imagine the creator of all the universe decided that he needed one of you. In closing, let me ask you this question. Graduates, as you move on into our lives, whether it be off to college, to work, we will be faced with many obstacles. Will you allow God to be the anchor in, in your life? Congratulations to my fellow graduates. May God bless you in a mighty way. Thank you. President Stetler, Dr. Churchill, faculty, staff, family, friends, and fellow graduates, thank you for celebrating this momentous occasion with us. Our deepest gratitude goes out to our professors, mentors, and parents that aided us in our journey of earning these diplomas. As most of you know, our journey has been a unique one. Our class has had to face many challenging circumstances during our tenure here at Hope Sound Bible College. To quickly summarize, our freshman year, David Sonaiva was killed in a tragic motorcycle accident. Our sophomore year, many of our families were facing physical and emotional battles back at home. Our junior year, Jacinda Stetler made her entrance into heaven. Then COVID-19 came and sent all of us packing our bags, forcing us to do school virtually for the spring semester, which can I say was terrible. Then lastly, our senior year, we faced the impact of COVID-19 in the Hope Sound community losing many loved ones from our church con congregation. Now, I'm not focusing on any of these events to bring sadness to a very joyous occasion, but rather to look back and see God's hand moving throughout each difficulty in our journey. I want to direct our attention to a scripture that is found in Habakkuk 3.19. It says, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on mine high hills. With the help of John Gill, a commentator, I want to break down this verse into two parts. First, the Lord God is my strength. God is the giver of strength. When you feel like you're ready to give up, he is there to strengthen your heart. He is continually increasing your faith, hope, love, and patience during tribulations. God supports, maintains, secures, and defends. He is faithful to carry you through all trials and afflictions. Second, he will make me walk upon my high hills. As we go through the trials of life, God will help us to surmount difficulties and obstructions that lie in our way with ease. We will become swift on our feet and will live life in a lively, cheerful manner, for we know our hope and strength is found in Christ. Our souls will become strengthened and our hearts are enlarged with the love and grace of God. Sometimes in life, God will lead you to the hard places that you cannot go around but you must go through. Thankfully, God doesn't just lead you to that hard place and leave you, but as our class has experienced, 
He'll lead you through the hard place. Our time at Hope Sound was more than just an educational experience, but it was an experience that helped us to learn how to surmount difficulties together with God and his people. During those trying times, we learned to trust God and his leading. Furthermore, he used those times to help us get our feet planted and mold us into a deeper relationship with him. Now that we are going out into the world, we must not forget everything that we've learned. Jesus told us in his word that we will go through difficult times. He said, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. We must not allow these difficult times to obstruct our vision from God. The Lord is our strength. Without his strength, failure is inevitable. However, if we keep our eyes fixated on the one who is faithful, he will uphold us and help us through. As we leave these halls of learning, let us remember that there is nothing that life can throw at us to destroy us, but rather together with God's strength and support from one another, we can truly mount up as a deer on our, upon our high hills and become the strong individuals God has designed us to be. Let us remember that whatever happens in life, our focus must remain upon our greatest purpose in life, knowing Christ and making him known. Thank you. President Stetler, Dr. Churchill, faculty, staff, family, and friends, thank you for the important role you played in getting us here to this moment today. Fellow graduates, we made it. For some of us, our journey to graduation began three, four, or even five years ago. This has been a long time coming. For as long as we work towards this goal, it's hard to believe this goal is actually already here. We've already done it. We will forever be done with Kaufman questions, module assignments, and literature reviews. And hopefully, we will never again have to struggle through group discussions and literature class about books that we never actually had time to read. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Stratton. <laughs> there are some days when I look at us and I see the semblance of the immature freshman that we started this journey as. But more often, I look at us and I see the amazing seniors we have become. We've grown up, we've worked hard, and we've made it. And in less than an hour, hopefully, we will be triumphantly leaving this building with diplomas in hand onto our next adventure. If the high school version of myself were standing in front of you right now, she would tell you to go out there and change the world. She would channel every hero and heroine from the ridiculous amount of fiction and fantasy novels that she consumed and say that if we just go out there and try, we'll move mountains. However, at this point, it's very evident that the high school version of myself is long gone. The person standing before us has what could be considered the most subtle ambition to leave you with. Although I may no longer be calling for heroic deeds and world changing, I am admonishing us to take on perhaps a higher calling. And it is simply this, do good. Everyone may now be thinking that this is leading up to be the most anticlimactic valedictory speech you've ever heard. And that's all right. The popular novelist Rick Riordan is often accredited with this quote, go into the world and do well, but more importantly, go into the world and do good. Graduates, this is what I admonish us to do as we leave HSBC. Go into the world and do good. In case everyone was not already aware of this, I'm an English major. So I want to point out the importance of word choice here. Neither Mr. Riordan nor myself said go into the world and be good. We said go into the world and do good. The choice of verb here changes everything. To be good just refers to goodness taking place, but to do good requires an action on our part. In the last few weeks as I have been preparing to graduate, this predominant idea, idea has been on my mind. It's now up to us. We have done our time at HSBC, our professors have instructed and guided us, the faculty has led us, and it is now our turn to go out and do something with what they have given us. 
I think of the portion of the college's mission statement which states that at HSBC, we are committed to preparing servant leaders. A servant leader is someone who has all the knowledge and capabilities essential to leadership, but instead chooses to serve. This is not to say that we are not called to be leaders because we most certainly are, but what I believe it is saying is that we acknowledge these skills we have been given and we still choose to use them for service. Good works do not provide for our salvation, but instead our salvation produces these good works. We choose to do good with what we have been given. It is now up to us. It is our turn to go into the world and show them that we are different, that it's not about us, but it is instead about so much more. I leave you with this quote by Larry H. Miller. Go into the world and do good until there is too much good in the world. Thank you. Things time. 
Thank you, Mr. Lucas Ryder and the College Chapel Choir for that beautiful, beautiful number. I bring you greetings tonight from a person that I really miss. Dr. Cliff Churchill is not here with us tonight because in his zeal as a part of the Florida Association of Christian Colleges and Schools, in a part of his zeal to get all their school evaluations caught up to date, he has traveled far and wide across the state of Florida doing school evaluations. And wouldn't you know, he got COVID. A very light case. I accused him of just putting it on. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. He got COVID. And he's not here with us tonight. That's very special to me because this would have been the 26th year that we have done this together. When I came to Hope Sound, really not having much of a clue what I was doing, I sat right over there on that front seat and asked him if he would be academic dean, and he didn't have a clue what I was asking him to do. And he agreed, and I agreed, and we've been at it ever since. So, Dr. Churchill, you're watching tonight. We greet you. We miss you. You're a wonderful friend to every one of our graduates. We're sorry you're not here. Our commencement address tonight is to be delivered by Dr. Chris Dewhurst. Dr. Dewhurst has an extensive educational background. He graduated in 2004 from Union Bible College. In 2010, he graduated from, Uni from Ohio University with a Bachelor of Science degree in special education. In 2011, he received a Master of Education degree in instructional leadership from Wright State University. In 2018, he graduated from the University of the Cumberlands with a Master of Clinical Psychology degree. And then in 2020, he graduated from the same institution with a Doctor of, Cl of Clinical Psychology degree. From 2004 until the present, 17 years, he has served as pastor of Pilgrim Holiness Churches in various places throughout the Midwest. He is currently serving in Lexington, Kentucky. From 2011 to 2017, he served as a special education teacher in a variety of public schools. From 2018 to present, he has served as a licensed clinical psychologist with Sheldon Forensic Solutions. In this capacity, he has served as a psychologist for the Kentucky State Prison System. He's currently under contract to serve as instructor and counseling department chairman for Hope Sound Bible College in our counseling department. It is a great joy to have Dr. Chris Dewhurst here tonight to bring this commencement address. As I look out over the sea of faces, I'm absolutely overwhelmed by your kindness. And before I say anything else, I want to give special thanks to all those who have made it possible for our family to be here and have showed their kindness. I'm reminded of Deuteronomy 6, 10 through 11, where the promise is given to God's people that they would live in cities that they didn't build and houses they didn't build and drink from wells they didn't dig and eat vineyards and olive groves that they didn't themselves plant. I'm so thankful for those of you predecessors who sat here in front of me who have graciously given me materials that you made with your own blood, sweat, and tears and allowed me to walk in your footsteps and try my best to continue the legacy that you started. Thank you so much, and thank you for your kindness. I will say every time I hear an introduction, though, I'm a little bit afraid. The Bible says that if we cast our bread on the water, it'll come back to us. But there's some loaves that I've cast on the water that I don't want back. 
When I was at Union Bible College, we were preparing a momentous occasion to have Reverend Albert Barr come and speak to us, and we've been waiting for years. Those of you who were around in the late 90s and early 2000s remember that Albert Barr was, was very, very highly sought after for his wisdom and his humor. And I knew as the president of the student organization, if we could get him there, we could draw in a crowd and it would be a wonderful occasion. But I knew that as it fell to me to introduce him, it was gonna be a big task. Number one, everyone already knew him. And number two, there was nothing I could add. And in my mind, I, I conjured up some kind of wonderful introduction that said that I would just spoil this moment with my feeble words, but that's not what came out of my mouth. I stood in that austere gathering and told the crowd gathered there that I could go on all night about Albert Barr, but I would have nothing good to say. <laughs> and I stood there in absolute horror for what had come out of my mouth because I knew he was witty and I knew he could... <laughs> Just cut me down if he wanted. And so I just turned and walked off the stage. Thankfully, he came into the pulpit desk and was very, very gracious. And he said something to the effect of that was the most accurate uh, <laughs> introduction he'd ever had. Well, I'll tell you, I don't plan on going on and on all night tonight, Josh Maudlin. But I do have something important that I want to say, and it's, it's been on my heart for some time. And when Dr. Stetler asked if I could speak, this, this truth had been on my heart for some time. I am well aware, as a pastor of 17 years and as a father of high schoolers, that we are in a very interesting, let's say, moment in our nation's history. I listened as one of the valedictorians talked about the troubling time that they've come through. It has been a very, very challenging year. And we can't gather in this capacity without addressing this moment. And so we look to the Word of God and look to the most similar story that I can find. And it's a story in 2 Kings chapter 6 of a man the Bible calls servant. He doesn't have a name, he's just servant. I always found that interesting because his predecessor was Gehazi, the one who fell down with leprosy and was thrown out of the ministry. And now his, his predecessor is just servant. I don't know, maybe the Bible calls him that because they want to wait to see if he's going to stick around long enough to get a name. I don't know. But he comes to the door of the, of the house where the prophet is. It's an early morning. Perhaps he's got a, a jug in his hand with water in it or he's going to get water. He opens the door, the birds are chirping, and through the gathering haze, he can see that not just where he's standing, not just that house, but the entire city is surrounded, the Bible says, compassed by the hosts. And it represents to him everything that could be wrong, impending death hostile cultural takeover, where all that they know and love will be lost. Sudden and quick onslaught. Sounds kind of like a Facebook post, doesn't it? <laughs> you see, we're really good, like this young man, to know what's wrong. We could post about it. We could talk about it. And we have some of those same, same themes, impending death, or so they say. Hostile culture. Sudden and quick. In a year and a half, everything changes. We know what's wrong. And so he stands there and he does the only thing that he can say, Master, what are we going to do? And we've been saying the same thing. This is the real fear that we teachers have to deal with in the high school and in the college. This thought that our students are sitting there, we want to give them hope, but we know we have to address what they're experiencing. What are they going through? And we're really good at having our eyes open to what the problem is, but not always very good at having our eyes open to where the problem originated. See, the prophet, he wasn't worried about this problem because he knew how they got there. 
He had been the one who had secretly been informing on the troops. He was the one that every time that that they would try to get together some kind of great battle scheme, he would run off and, and send word to the king. It was a miracle. And the miracle of knowing the troop movements was a lot greater miracle than just gathering up some people and surrounding a house. He wasn't troubled because he knew how they got there. And let me tell you, the same could be said for the challenge that we're in right now. Some of us can understand how we got here. Some of us can understand what's going on. And even though it gives us pause, it gives us a hope that no one else really possesses. To understand this, you have to understand the human brain. And, and please indulge me just for, for a moment to be a psychologist. The human brain is, is separated up into three functions because we, we are a mirror of our creators. Our brains process things. Our brains sense. Our brains feel. That's, that's what we do. We, we, we process the things that are coming to us. We think thoughts, and then we feel But if you look at the Word of God, the Word of God is very, very clear that the thinking part is supposed to be preeminent over all the others. The the sensing and the feeling is supposed to be subjected to the thinking. This is what the Apostle Paul is talking about in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Going on, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. In Galatians chapter 5, he says this, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the spirit lusteth against the spirit. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. And then in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are called by our Creator to put our bodies under subjection, to put the emotional in the sensing centers of our brain, under subjection to the higher order thinking and the thoughts of God. But the problem is fear and anger, those emotions, they come along. About 60 years ago, the sexual revolution came along. And postmodernism and relativism and humanism and hedonism, all these isms came along. And they came with one message, throw off restraint. If it feels good, do it. How can it be wrong if it feels so right? And so for 60 years, we have been literally, as a human species, training our brains to subject our thinking to our emotions, to subject our thinking to our feeling. And over time, that causes a very, very dreadful change because we pass those things on. Scientists say that we pass on traumatic things to the third generation, and it matches right with the Word of God where it says that sins are passed on to the third and fourth generation. And what happens is when you continually overfire these parts of your brain that are for emotion, they, they literally have the power to take over your thinking. You can no longer think clearly. You get into a mental haze. And it's hard for you to do what's right because you really can't remember what's right. And you fall into confusion. Oh, but if there were some solution. (laughs) I'm glad you asked. There is. There is a solution. Because the same Apostle Paul that talked about the problem also talked about the cure. It's important that when we say, that we are Hope Sound Bible College and Hope Sound Christian Academy. We, we're not just biblical. We're not just Christian. We are an institution that believes in the doctrine of entire sanctification. We believe in heart holiness. In other words, we possess the cure. Elisha is standing there, and, and he prays a prayer. He doesn't ask for the troops to go away. He doesn't ask for fire from heaven. He simply prays those prayers. Lord, would you just open the eyes of the servant? 
Would you just open the eyes of the servant that he could see? See, he was asking for the supernatural. He was asking for his eyes to be open, which is not the same as asking for him to be woke. He was asking for his mind to be renewed. He was asking for God, through the Holy Spirit, to subject his senses to the Holy Spirit. More importantly, he was asking for his heart and mind to be brought under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And verse 17 says, And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. <laughs> and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about. He didn't need God to do anything that he wasn't already doing. He just needed God to show the servant who was really in control. You know, four years, or I'm sorry, 16 years ago, some of you prayed that prayer. And you entrusted your most precious commodities to this institution. Pastors, parents, and grandparents, you were praying the same thing through your sleepless nights and through your sacrificial giving and answering the call at 3 o'clock in the morning from a child that was homesick. You were saying one thing, Lord, open their eyes. Lord, open their eyes. And I'm here to tell you as a teacher that has sat and has talked and graded papers with these students, I can tell you that God has answered your prayers. Holiness is alive and well on this campus. It is taught and experienced and lived by the faculty of this institution. We were sitting in class a few days ago and I was teaching an intervention for young people. And we were to write out of, and, and we were modeling what we would, would teach young people. We were writing out, the first part of the assignment is write down who your hero is, and then you go on and talk about that hero, and then uh, you know, talk about what this person means to you, and then and go on. And then we went around the room and we began to read off what the students had written. One person talked about a grandma, that wasn't a surprise. Another one talked about Queen Esther, that wasn't a surprise. And then all of a sudden, and I'm going to call this person by name, I'm not ashamed. As one of the students began to read in detail, not just a few words, but line after line after line after line of the godly influence of her department chair, Mrs. Joanna Stratton. She talked about her godly influence. She talked about how she's impacted her life. She's talked about all that she means to her and how that she has molded her into a future holiness leader. My heart is stirred to know that this is a place that doesn't just create Christian leaders, but it creates leaders that have the cure for the pandemic fear. It, it has the cure for, for the cultural fears. It has the cure for whatever kind of panic is going on in our lives. And these students have sat in a holiness community. They sat in this church and listened to ministry and watched the saints of God and watched them come in from the foreign fields and watched them come down for retirement. They've seen aging saints of God live holiness right here in this place. They've gotten to sit through Seabreeze Camp. They've had their ministry opportunities like PR groups and Christian service. And it has changed who they are and how they think at their core. Finally, we see that toward the end of the story with Elisha and the servant, Elisha goes and he grabs these soldiers by the hand and he, and he walks them away. Walks them right into Samaria. <laughs> and then Elisha prays the second open your eyes prayer, but this time it's for the troops. And he prays the prayer and once again their eyes were opened. I want to tell you one final thing, and, and this was echoed also in, in the speeches here. God has not just opened the eyes of our students, but he wants to, through them, open the eyes of the world. You know, we do live in a hostile culture. We do live in a place where we feel at war with political forces and all these different things. But you'll notice when the king said, shall we slay these people? Elisha said, no, no, I just want their eyes to be opened. These same ones that are coming against us and voting against us and doing all these things to feel like they're tearing us down. They're not our enemy. 
They're our opportunity. God, through us, can also open the eyes of a world. And I know it because I've read papers. I've gotten papers at 4.30 in the morning. I said, oh my, Dr. Stetler, this is not going to be readable. And then I sat there and it was amazing. I think we need to give a shout out to Monster Energy Drinks. <laughs> I've sat in discussions with students as they've challenged me with their thinking. It's amazing. And I can see the footprint of other teachers and, and how that doctrine has embedded them. And I can see already, even though they're young, I can see that God is already teaching them to subjugate those parts of their mind that, that represent the carnal and to, and to put them under subjection of God's spirit. So we're going to return them to you. Can I talk to you, parents and pastors, for just a second? We're returning them to you. We're returning them to you. So one little thing I just want to ask, if we could have more Facebook posts about puppies and salads and less doom and gloom. We've worked so hard to encourage them. Please don't discourage them. Please don't tell them God's not in control. We're sending them to you because they are the antidote for the modern panic. They know that God is bigger than political parties or social movements. They know that God still saves, entirely sanctifies, and keeps. They know that God still transforms, no matter how many times socially woke definitions of morality and fade our culture. They know that God's not frightened by protest or legislation. God is in charge during lockdowns, mandates, and riots. God rules from Silicon Valley to Washington, D.C., no corporations can successfully block, cancel, unfriend, or unfollow the message of Calvary or the power of Pentecost. <laughs> so watch out, world! We are about to set loose the Hope Sound Bible College and Hope Sound Christian Academy class of 2021, and their eyes are wide open. Thank you, Dr. Dewhurst. I have several presidential awards to give to high school students. And there are two categories of these presidential awards. The gold presidential award recognizes those who are in the 85th percentile on recognized national achievement tests in math or reading, as well as a 3.5 GPA or above. The presidential silver is either a 85 percentile on recognized national achievement test in math or reading or a 3.5 GPA or above. Receiving a gold presidential award goes to Ms. Sarai Santiago. Receiving a silver presidential award goes to Ms. Alexis Archibald. <laughs> Receiving a silver presidential award goes to Ms. Camelia Knight. And receiving a silver presidential award goes to Miss Janessa Thompson. It is my privilege tonight to distribute some awards. I am going to ask Miss Soraya Santiago to come again. She is the valedictorian of the high school 
and she is being given a $1,000 scholarship to be distributed at the rate of $500 a semester. So, Sarai, would you come at this time? I would like to ask Alexa Dawn Archibald to come. She is the high school salutatorian, and she is awarded a $500 scholarship to be distributed at a rate of $250 a semester. A bit of explanation is in order at this point if you will turn back in your program to the scholarship page, which is on the left-hand side as you look at it of the last opening there. We have a considerable list of people who have given memorial scholarships to students, some of them current students, some of them incoming students. And what I have told people making donations of this kind time after time is, as you memorialize your loved ones, they will be remembered at graduation. And so tonight, this is how we're going to do that. I'm going to go through that list of scholarships, briefly explaining who is behind the various scholarships, when I reach the end, I'm going to ask all the young people who are receiving those scholarships to stand at the same time, and we will give them a round of applause. All right? The first on the list is the John and Dorothy Basham Scholarship. The Bashams came here from Lexington, Kentucky, where they had both been involved in public education for many, many years of their life. They came to Hope Sound for Mr. Basham to serve as the academic dean and his wife to teach. Eventually, Mr. Basham served as the interim president of this institution just before I came in the fall of 1995. And they, there, has, there is a scholarship that has been established in their honor, and we deeply appreciate the interest, the passion, of the Bashams, they particularly, in the later years of their time here, focused on international students. They traveled to Taiwan, they traveled to New Guinea, and they were good friends, often entertaining all of our international students in their home. So the, the Basham Scholarship is given to remember them. Louis Bumgardel is the next scholarship that is given by a family to to honor a man who spent his entire life pastoring. No, he didn't get a lot of accolades. He, he was not in the limelight, but that family felt like they wanted to remember the life and ministry of Louis Baumgartel. The next scholarship is the Bigger Miller Families Scholarship. This scholarship represents one of the colossal tragedies that we've experienced across the years. Brent Bigger, and his wife, who was by maiden name a Miller, all lost their lives in a tragic accident along with their children, and their families have agreed together to remember. So tonight, we remember the Biggers, and we join with those families to say thank you for helping young people to continue their education. The Anna Box Scholarship is a scholarship that's given to many colleges and universities. It was substantial, $100,000, and that scholarship has helped many, many young people across the years. She was not necessarily directly related to our schools, but she was interested in education of young people and philanthropy, and so she gave that scholarship. Kenneth Brown, Kenneth O. Brown, was a prince of a preacher from Virginia. 
and several of his children and family members attended here and when he passed away his family established a scholarship in in memory of him willie and Mel melba burton that's a new scholarship this year some of you will recognize the name carson scarborough carson and his wife attended school here and his wife linda was a burton before she married him and this is to honor her parents and he and some of his children got together and established this scholarship and we rejoice with them tonight. Glenn and Julia Camry. Glenn and Julia Camry were not close to our school. They came across our paths. They liked what they saw. They were particularly interested in missions and rather unexpectedly, they left a significant amount of money to establish a scholarship to support a young person who was going into missions. And so tonight, we rejoice in the Glenn and Julia Camry Scholarship. W.C. Carpenter, a Tidewater Virginian. If you listen to him talk, you would recognize the Tidewater brogue. He sent all of his children but one to Hope Sound Bible College. His oldest son became a chaplain in the military and rose to very high rank. Bill Carpenter's been here many times, and his daughter lives in the area currently and we memorialize W.C. Carpenter tonight. Peter and Maggie Castor. Peter and Maggie Castor were farmers in New York, but they loved Hope Sound. They loved the ministry here. They thought the world of Dr. Heron and of H. Rob French, the founder of this entire project here, and they came to Hope Sound. And someone told me that along with Foster Allison and the man for whom this building is named, Brother Carroll, Peter Castor left his footprints, uh, his fingerprints all over the buildings that were built here. Those gentlemen invested their lives. When I first came, Peter could not talk. He spoke very, very haltingly and I could not understand him. But his dear wife would stand by. They would call me to their house and say, and she would say, Peter, what do you want to do? And he would try and try, and finally you'd say, she'd say, he wants to give you $2,000. Well, I couldn't tell how much he wanted to give, but they did that over and over again. And at the time of their death, they left a sizable estate to Hope Sound Bible College to help young people go to college. And we are eternally grateful to Peter and Maggie Castor. Ray and Mariana Chamberlain, are veteran missionaries and they left a scho or a scholarship was established in their name. The Faxon Bernice Chapin, Chapin scholarship is one that I have never been able to track down. Maybe I should get Jim Olson to help me with that, but it's given to someone who's interested in math and interestingly enough, Hope Sound Bible College and Hope Sound Christian Academy has a whole array of very fine math teachers. We can teach the top level of math courses, and uh, so their interest is well served. Archie Coons. Everybody knows Brother Coons. I'll never forget he embarrassed me worse than anybody I've ever known. He stood on the platform in Louisville, Kentucky, where he was attending church at that time, put his arm around my shoulder and said, this is the most bullheaded young man I've ever met. <laughs> I never even got a chance to refute him. <laughs> the next is the Graham Scholarship, and that is contributed by Dr. Andrew Graham and his wife. They are passionately interested in young people studying for Christian counseling and that scholarship is funded annually. The Crawford Family Scholarship. Les Crawford and his children have established scholarships for every segment of our school. They have taken particular interest in our Vacation Bible School, our, our young children training uh, part of our education department and the Vacation Bible School ministry, and they fund the travel. This summer, that team will hold five Vacation Bible Schools all across the country, and that scholarship goes, helps, to, uh, helps to support that, as well as helping young people in every other division of the college. We appreciate the Crawford Scholarship. The Colifer Anderson Scholarship. I was sitting in my office one day and Jackie Foley called me and said, there's a man down here that wants to talk to you. 
I came downstairs. This man stood at the desk and he said, I've got a little check for you here. And he said, my wife and I have been driving up and down this street observing your students and we like what we see. Now, I don't think your background is just like us. We're assembly of God, but we like what we see. And I want to give you this little check to help. And he gave it to me and I looked at it and nearly lost my breath. $100,000. I hadn't held very many $100,000 checks at that time. So I kind of rubbed it and held it for a while. But they helped to fund our public relations groups that travel across the country. Aubrey Elam is a scholarship that represents the South Alabama District of the Bible Methodist Connection of Churches, the Alabama Conference. And Aubrey Elam was very instrumental in starting the indoor camp and that that scholarship is designated for an incoming student from Alabama and better yet that district this year we have a young man coming from Alabama who will receive that scholarship in honor of Aubrey Elam Elkin Elkinton uh, Elkinton Memorial Scholarship Mr. Elkinton had a daughter who came here and married Wally Austin some of you will remember and Mr. Elkinton was passionately interested in Michigan, missions. He lived in Alaska for a while, traveled around, lived in various places, and left money to establish the scholarship. The Fiesel Memorial Scholarship. Anybody who knows the Fiesel brothers knows some of the nicest people you ever meet. They're from the Roanoke, Virginia area. Several of their children came to Hope Sound Bible College, and there's a scholarship uh, to honor the Fiesels. The next two scholarships, H. Rob French and Will French, are given by the French family. Of course, H. Rob French was the founder of FEA Ministries. And then this college and this academy were started on this campus as a, almost a joint effort of FEA Ministries. And so this, these scholarships are given in their memory. Bradley and Doris at Dorothy Hadley. They were re winter residents who came to Hope Sound, quietly set over in this side of the church during the winter months, and they loved our young people, and they es established the scholarship. Louis Hammond, anybody who knew Louis knew that he wore bow ties when bow ties weren't cool. Uh, Louis Hammond was the s brother of Mrs. Dorothy Heron and Miss Frances Hammond. The two ladies were very prominent here at Hope Sound across the final years of the Heron's time here. Louis Hammett lived in Pell City, Alabama, and that scholarship is in his honor. Jim Hain is, was married to the brother of Bob French, and they lived in Oklahoma, and they established a scholarship in his honor. Bud and Jane handled few people served any more faithfully any longer, and Bud is one of the people responsible for the strong math emphasis that we have had across the years. He was a math teacher. In fact, by the time he got done figuring things out and trying to explain them to me, I was totally confused beyond help. Stephen D. Heron, of course, is the president and founder of Hope Sound Bible College, and we have a scholarship that his daughter supports very faithfully. It also should include his wife, Dorothy. Uh, we'll have to make sure that gets changed because it's the Stephen and Dorothy Heron Scholarship. Miriam, Miriam Horn is a relative of Randy Addison's wife. Some of you know the Addison family. It was here for many years. The Addison Student Center memorializes that family. Randy's wife's family established the Miriam Horn Scholarship. Neil Horton of the family of Joe Horton Joe has been involved in politics. He's taught here. He's done many things. And uh, there's a scholarship established in honor of Neil. Bob and Lois Jones. We have John Jones and his wife here. Dr. Brent Jones will be serving in Dr. Churchill's place momentarily. Bob Jones passed away recently. I went to his funeral. His funeral was in Marion, Ohio, a church in a rough section of town. The church was packed. It was packed with older people, younger people, street people, 
church people, every kind of person you could imagine. I stood there with tears running down my cheeks thinking what an influence this man has had. I can't think of anything he'd be more happy with than having a scholarship that will help young people be educated at Hurt at Hope Sound. Kurt Jensen is another one that I'm not able to find background on a more recent scholarship. Marvin Jewell was a preacher and he wanted to see other preachers uh, trained and he established ministerial scholarships at every Bible College and the Conservative Holiness Movement. Paul and Jeanette Kaufman. Paul is our chairman of the board. He is the owner of Craftsman Trailer and he and his wife have established a generous scholarship to help young people gain their education. Jesse Kimmerer is uh, Mrs. Olson's father, I believe. Yes, Jesse Kimmerer. And this scholarship is set up in honor of him. O.L. King, the, the father of Mrs. Dr. Connie Palm, and two people that left their mark on the academic side of Hope Sound probably more than anyone else were Drs. Ed and Dr. Connie Palm, and uh, that memorial is for her family. Sarah Macy, uh, it was a person who had a special interest in mission. The Eleanor Huber Messner Scholarship is uh, from a family in the Barberton, Ohio area, sent many of their children here. Mission Helps. Mission Helps is a missions organization that has taken it upon themselves to sponsor missions majors, and we sincerely, sincerely appreciate that. Nelson Stahl Scholarship. If I say the name Francis Stahl, you may not know who I'm talking about, but those of you who attend Hope Sound Bible Church during the winter might know if I talk about sugar. Anybody know who I'm talking about? The little lady from Virginia that greets everybody as sugar. <laughs> Her husband, Nelson, was a remarkable man, a very successful, a very successful man in the, in the realm of insurance, and he was a lover of sailing. He had a 40-foot, three-masted sailboat with which he traveled across the Atlantic and back on more than one occasion. Quite an interesting man. And this is given in his honor. G.I. and Olga Norman. Old-timers will remember G.I. Norman and his wife. He was big, rough, rugged, and loud. She was dainty, ladylike, and everything positive you want to say about a woman. The Normans had a son a son who was the villain in the family. The first time he called me to set up this scholarship, he didn't even want to tell me who he was. In fact, he used a fake name. Finally, he called me and said, okay, got all my past cleared up. Now we can change the name. He said, I want this scholarship named in honor of G.I. and Olga Norman. That was remarkable. I visited him in Salt Lake City, Utah. He lived on about the 12th floor of a condo that had it been on the other side could have let me look right down into the courtyard of the Mormon tabernacle. He was not a Mormon. I think he was hiding out there from everyone else. <laughs> but he gave very generously to establish a scholarship in honor of his parents who were often here in the early days of Seabreeze Camp and of Hope Sound Bible College. I'll skip down and connect this one. You see the one down there, Moss Stubbs. Moss Stubbs was his music teacher. He was a musician, too good of a musician for his own good. He could play the piano and he could play the trumpet. And when he attended Frankfurt Pilgrim College, he would crawl out the window after curfew and go down to bars and nightclubs and play and make money to pay a school bill at Frankfurt Pilgrim College. How's that for craziness? Quite a remarkable man. Ignacio Palacios is remarkable, but for a lot of different reasons. He was a Mexican national who taught English here and at Indian River State College. He was a master of grammar and teaching freshman composition. Dr. Ignacio Palacios taught here. He taught at, at uh, Letourneau University in Texas. He taught at Latin American Bible Institute. He was a remarkable man, wonderful man, recently passed away. 
Dr. Zed and Connie Palm, I've already mentioned that they left big footprints in academics. And the Palms were memorialized by several of their students, and that's why we have this scholarship tonight. George Royal, George Royal lived in Central Florida, had furniture stores all over Central Florida. And in years gone by, our students would load up on Sunday afternoon as part of Christian service and drive to Belle Glade, which at one point had the highest AIDS rate in the world for any community. Many, many, many immigrants there working in the sugar fields that surrounded that city. And our young people would go over there into the park, play soccer with those kids, talk with those kids, tell them Bible stories, have a little vacation Bible school service, and pile up on the bus and come back. That's the way their Sunday afternoon was spent. One day, a lady by the name of Royal, her husband had passed away. She saw those kids. She asked about them and found out they were from Hope Sound Bible College. And she came over here and said, I like what you're doing. And set up a scholarship that she, in fact, there is money contributed to this day from the royal family to help young people study at Hope Sound Bible College. Ruth Russell, she was a non-assuming lady who worked here behind the scenes. One day she caught me out in front of the cafeteria and she said, President Stetler, I want you to know that I've remembered the school in your will, and I said, in my will, and I, not my will, her will. I said, well, thank you. We really, really appreciated that. I thought maybe $5,000. How does $165,000 sound? Shocked me to death. That woman never married. I'm not even sure she had a car. She stashed her money away, and when she passed away, she left a substantial gift to help young people study. Dean Schleckaw. If you knew Dean Schleckaw in his last, last years, you could hear him half a block away. He was hard of hearing and wouldn't wear a hearing aid. Therefore, he talked very, very loudly. But he was a passionate man about missions and a wonderful man. Actually, he is the grandfather of Mr. Doyle Bazone our band director, Robert Thompson. Robert Thompson is from Columbus, Indiana. And Robert Thompson has been as faithful and generous as anybody I know. And he set up scholarships. He has given and given and given in every other capacity and he's recently set up scholarships to help young people. Vance Memorial, the Vances live in southeastern Ohio, Mr. Vance own furniture stores. I like those furniture store people. Anybody here a furniture store? I'd like to meet you afterward. He was a furniture store man and he set up scholarships. I went to see him and he sat in his chair with tears running down his face and said, you know, I'm not a preacher and I'm not a lot of other things, but he said, God has blessed me with the ability to make money and I want to help. I want to use it for God's glory and I believe in what you're doing at Hope Sound. Say, why did you take the time to talk about this tonight? Because I told those people their loved ones would be remembered. That's why I'm keeping my promise. And I appreciate what they've done. And so do these kids. All of you who are receiving any of these scholarships, would you please stand at this time? Quickly. There they are. <laughs> Thank you so much, and you may be seated. And if you own a furniture store, see me afterward. <laughs> Mr. Harold Martin is head. Mr. Harold Martin is thoroughly Hope Sound. Started here in kindergarten. Went through elementary school, high school, college. Graduated, went to Moody, got his master's degree served in missions, and then he came back to head FEA. And we are so blessed to have him. And FEA, one of our sister ministries here, is making a presentation of a scholarship, and he's coming to do it. I'm glad President Settler went through those names because I've sat here year after year wondering who some of those people were. I did receive a text from one of my young men who said, Dad, please hurry or we're going to be here till I graduate. And uh, anyway, 
It is my privilege to be here on behalf of FEA Ministries and to present two scholarships. One of them, the family has already been mentioned, and that is the Doctors Edward and Connie Palm Memorial Mission Scholarship. Both Edward and Connie Palm had distinguished careers in Christian service as pastors, educators, and school administrators. And we actually just built uh, our newest building on campus is actually named in honor of the Palms. They also spent many years of outstanding service as HIM missionaries in Taiwan. Their legacy lives on specifically through Dr. Connie Palm's writings. Her books have been published through HIM's gospel publishing mission and almost two million copies have been distributed throughout nearly every country in the world. We honor the legacy of these mission and education heroes by presenting this scholarship to someone who has demonstrated spiritual fervor, a desire for academic excellence, and Christian character and conduct. Interestingly enough, this individual is a student in both the education and intercultural studies departments, thus making the presentation of the Palm Scholarship even more, appro more appropriate. And I'm honored tonight to offer this $1,000 scholarship to Miss Janessa Beardsley. Janessa, would you come forward, please? The second scholarship is in honor of a man who means a whole lot to me and uh, has meant a lot to many, many of us here in this room tonight. May God bless his memory. Dr. Robert E. Whitaker, Memorial Mission Scholarship. Dr. Whitaker was one of the first two graduates of Hope Sound Bible College. He was a Christian statesman, and anyone who know, knew him knows exactly what I mean by that. He served as HSB, uh, HSBC professor, dean of students, vice president. He then served for 10 years as president of the college. Dr. Whitaker also had a heart for missions and served as the first chairman of FEA's foreign missions department, what is now referred to as Hope International Missions. I was in the Bahamas a couple weeks ago with one of our earliest missionaries, and I asked him, I said, so back in the day in the 60s, early 70s, who was the home office? When you needed something about missions, who did you call in Hope Sound? And he said, oh. That was Dr. Whitaker. Dr. Whitaker basically, in many respects, was the founder of Hope International Missions. He was very involved with HIM and almost every summer would travel to the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, just to the east and south of us to teach and train national leadership there. We honor the legacy of Dr. Whitaker by presenting this scholarship to someone who has demonstrated spiritual fervor, a desire for academic excellence, outstanding Christian character and conduct, and a passion to serve God in missions. I'm honored to award this $1,000 scholarship this evening to Mr. Benjamin Clark. Benjamin, would you come forward, please? All right, we have come to the time when we're ready to award diplomas. Let me mention two or three. <laughs> let me mention two or three things to you. I don't know what I said, but I often don't know what I'm saying. So, uh, let me mention two or three three things to you. We will have a professional photographer who will be taking a picture as the graduate uh, receives their diploma. And so you will not have to rush to the front to do that, uh, to, to be a part of that. They will be taking that and those will be made available to you. Then for us here at Hope Sound, graduation should have a certain dignity to it. Do you understand what I mean? Now you can have enthusiasm and excitement and dignity at the same time. But there's a trend in modern graduation ceremonies toward the wild, crazy, and that beyond the pale, and we're not in for that. In fact, we ask you specifically tonight not to do that. We don't care if you cheer, if you clap, if you can whistle. Whistle. Well, I guess. <laughs> 
But no artificial noisemakers, please. No artificial noisemakers. And remember, this is a graduation exercise. There ought to be some things with some dignity to it. Now, south of us, there was a, a graduation where the college president, it got so wild that he stood up and said, this commencement is done. We're sending the rest by mail. You're dismissed. Well, I am sure you're going to cooperate with me until I won't even be tempted to say that. Is that not true? I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Thank you for being here so much. Thank you, Dr. Brent Jones, the head of our online studies department, for stepping in for Dr. Churchill, and we'll begin the presentation of diplomas at this time. Mr. President, it is my privilege to present the 2021 graduating class of Hove Sound Christian Academy. Nine are candidates for the high school diploma. Now, according to the foreign investigative lead by the board of directors of Hove Sound Bible College and Hove Sound Christian Academy, I confer upon you graduates your high school diploma. You are now graduates from Hove Sound Christian Academy. Sarai Santiago, valedictorian, summa cum laude. Alexis Don Archibald, salutatorian, magna cum laude. Caleb James Brown. <laughs> Justin Matthew Ellison. Jean Etienne. Ethan James Huff, cum laude. Camelia Grace Knight, cum laude. <laughs> Elio Pasquale Ramirez. Janessa Nicole Thompson, magna cum laude. <laughs> Seniors, you may now turn your tassels.
Mr. President, it is my privilege to present the 2021 graduates of the undergraduate class of Hope Sound Bible College. 19 are candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, three are graduating in absentia. Three are candidates for the Associate of Arts, two of which are graduating in absentia. And now, according to the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of Hope Sound Bible College, I confer upon you your respective college degrees. You are graduates of Hope Sound Bible College. Brittany M. Thornberry, valedictorian, summa cum laude, elementary education with a minor in music. <laughs> Laura May Sprinkle, valedictorian, summa cum laude, secondary English education. Seth Alexander Thomas, salutatorian, summa cum laude, counseling. <laughs> Donald Joseph Brinkle III, general Christian studies. Joshua Clayton Graham, summa cum laude, General Christian Studies. <laughs> Bethany Maria Yvonne Griggs, summa cum laude, Elementary Education. Hannah Elizabeth June Griggs, summa cum laude, elementary education. <laughs> Tyrell Allen Hurst, music education with a sacred concentration. Katrina Rose Hutchison, counseling. <laughs> Tavona C. Kemp, elementary education, minor in counseling. Alicia Lopez, counseling. <laughs> Joshua Edward Modlin, magna cum laude, ministerial studies. Clyde Burnett Niles, Jr., magna cum laude, elementary education. <laughs> Ch 
Austin Tolley, Ministerial Studies with a minor in Counseling. Cassidy Diana Weatherell, General Christian Studies. Deanna Weatherell, Elementary Education. Priscilla Ambrosio Vasquez, Pre-Professional Studies. It is my privilege to present the graduating class of 2021. Graduates, you may turn your tassels. Mr. President, it is my privilege to present the 2021 graduates of the first graduate class of Hope Sound Bible College. Nine are candidates for the Master of Education. Now, according to the authority vested in me by the Board of Directors of Hope Sound Bible College, I confer upon you your degrees as our first ever Master of Education graduates. Robert W. Booth, Educational Leadership. Carla Denise Case, Curriculum and Instruction. <laughs> Kara Renee Gumbiner, Educational Leadership. Pierre Filizer Honoret, Educational Leadership. <laughs> Tamara Don Robledo, Curriculum and Instruction. Joel Mark Vion, Educational Leadership. <laughs> K. 
Kendra Ann Vion, Curriculum and Instruction. Nathan Vion, Educational Leadership. <laughs> Kathleen Fay Wright, Curriculum and Instruction. It is my privilege to present the first master's graduates of the of Hope Sound Bible College. Graduates, you may turn your tassels. wasn't expecting to cry some tears of joy. That's awesome. Congratulations to each of you high school, college, and master's degree graduates of 2021. Tonight, on behalf of the Alumni Association of Hope Sound Christian Academy and Hope, school, Hope Sound Bible College, and especially our president, Rebecca Patterson Horde, who couldn't be here tonight. That's why I'm the pinch hitter. We welcome you as you join an illustrious group of graduates who are serving God all around the globe. We're proud of you. And we're grateful for what God has done in you. But we are hopeful and excited to see what God is going to do through you. Remember us. Come back and visit often. But first, go. Go knowing Christ and making him known. Go as a servant. We, we invited you in your time here to aim high and do well academically, even if you didn't finish the last pages of Beowulf, Laura. <clears throat> we, we encourage you to aim high, but now can I say aim low? Go as a servant. We've, we've invited you here and trained you to be servant leaders, so go and serve. Go being busy about God's business, bringing glory to him by serving him and others. Go remembering who you are. That was always my mom's parting advice or, or instruction as we left the door. Remember who you are. Remember your alma mater. But if you'll remember whose you are, and you represent him well as a child of God, we have no concerns but that you will present us well as a school. We love you, we're proud of you. Congratulations and God bless you. Well, we wanted to thank you again for coming to this commencement. This has been a wonderful occasion. And tonight, in every, in every baccalaureate and commencement, we try to represent all of the schools that are producing graduates. And so in the baccalaureate service, we had two parents of high school graduates. Tonight, 
we began by having Mr. David Gumbiner, who is the father of one of our master's degree graduates. And for the benediction, we have a man named Reverend J.R. Hutchison. His daughter is, gra uh, granddaughter, I'm sorry, his granddaughter is graduating from high school. And <laughs> I'm getting ready to retire, folks. <laughs> His granddaughter is graduating from college, but he holds a very unique place. He was one of two people to enroll in the very first class of Hope Sound Bible College, the very first class, he and Raymond Shreve. Now, you have heard of the two first graduates, Raymond Shreve and Bob Whitaker. Unfortunately, J.R. Hutchison didn't finish here. He went on to finish elsewhere. But he was a Canadian, so he was also the first international student at Hope Sound Bible College and a member of the very first class. Isn't that interesting? Reverend Hutchison, it is so good to have you. Would you come and pray the closing prayer? Would you stand together? Following the benediction, there will be a recessional. So please stay in your seats. We will go through the doors and through the outside doors into the front yard. Into the, onto the front walk for the greeting. If I can get people to open those doors and prop them open for me and open the ones in the back, we're marching right on through. That foyer becomes so crowded. We're happy to have this celebration free of a lot of COVID uh, restrictions, but we don't want to be careless. So we're marching right on through and going outside. All right? Thank you, Brother Hutchison. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon these graduates, for the gift of learning, maturing, and achieving the goals that will enable them to pursue their dreams with God-given confidence. In a world that's experiencing global crises of uncertainty and a nation that is desperately in need of the fundamental truths that are established in their hearts tonight. Give them the grace to persevere in the time of difficulty and discouragement, even in the face of fear and failure. Crown their success and their achievements with the grace of humility, and may they honor and glorify God in all things, knowing that without you, Lord, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do all things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, which strengtheneth us. We covet God's very best for each one of these graduates. Enable them to be faithful to God, true to themselves, and obedient to the word of God, upon which their faith is established this day. Bless each one in divine presence tonight, family, friends, faculty, mentors, pastors, and supporters, all who have contributed to the success of these students, these graduates, and to the ongoing achievements of this institution that is so heavily invested in so many individual lives that are represented here tonight. Lead us, guide us. We pray in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. God bless you.